you guys don't know me, um, I'm a fifth through eighth grade band director in uh, Lake Forest, Illinois, um, Chicago suburb. I just graduated last year. So I'm supposed to tell you uh, how to find a job. Um, I didn't apply to, if you guys went to Caitlin's um, thing, the last session. Uh, no, I'll be Caitlin on how to find a job. Okay. How to find a job. She applied to 80 something amount of places. Um, I didn't apply to as many, but it's, um, I'm gonna try and tell you from the point of application to once you're actually in the interview. So we'll just get right started. Um, I don't have a handout, unfortunately. Um, at the end, I do have a um, notepad, and if you guys give me your name and email address, I can share this with you, and so you guys can have it for good. So we'll just get started. All right, who can help me with my resume? Okay, so at Augie, we have our academic advisors, the CEC, and then alumni education grads. So I did, wasn't really aware of how many resources are actually available to us, and a lot of my advisors said, hey, I'll be able to help you, but you're kind of, you know, here's a template and you know, go for it. Um, I found that I actually had to go seek out and set up appointments with advisors step by step. Um, I really had to go to the CEC. Uh, depending on what you're applying for, it you set up your uh, application differently and your resume differently. Uh, and then always alumni education grants, uh, people that are older than you. Um, a lot of times this is the best way to network and to get advice and to really find out how to go about things. Um, I was told one specific way by an advisor and some graduates, and then I have some friends that are now administrators, and they said that it's the actual opposite way of I should actually put my application together. So um, really crucial to use your resources. I'm gonna go kind of quick, I got a lot of stuff. Uh, resume advice, so no more than two pages in length, um, no exceptions. Uh, for business, if you want to do business and not education, that's really down to a one page. Um, but really, uh, a lot of administrators get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications and resumes um, for one job. And so, if you have two, sorry, if you have three, four pages, that administrator is going to go next pile. So they, they set up three piles: yes, no, maybe. And so that's going to go right into the no pile because nobody has time to read four pages. Um, a lot of, you have a lot of stuff that you have done in college and in your career, which is super important, but really got to narrow it down, which leads me to my next thing, which is tailor your resume to the job you are applying for. Um, I was certified K-12 music education, and if I had, um, I could teach general music, band, choir, orchestra, but if I was applying to um, an orchestra job, I wouldn't put, hey, I did all of this general music clinical hours, because really, they don't care. Um, they, that's one less thing that you need on your resume, and um, it's nice that you have the opportunity to do that, but if that's not what you're applying for, don't do it. Or if you have, um, you did tutoring for, um, let's say your hobby is lifeguarding. You did tutoring for lifeguard training, blah, 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 and you're applying for a teaching job. Yes, it's cool that you're actually teaching, but it really has nothing to do with the job that you're applying for. So really tailor to what you need. Um, then the last one is your time to shine. How will you stand out? Um, it's okay to talk about yourself. It's okay to really let it be known what you have done, how you've done it. Um, your experiences are huge. So when you are putting your two pages together, really put like what's going to make you stand out from everybody else. Because like I said, hundreds and hundreds of people apply for one or two jobs, and they go. You have maybe thirty seconds to maybe a minute if you're lucky for that administrator to look at your application, your initial. Questions? Okay, so the order of your resume. This is, I've talked to you several administrators from different um, school districts, uh, several fa family friends that are supervisors of different um, education, uh, PE, math, language arts, music. And this is what they say the order is almost always. First of all, it has to be very clean. Do you, you do not want an administrator to have to look to find something. That's immediate, nope, not doing it. Um, so education, degree, GPA, honors, awards, have it all in the same place. So if you have GPA and your degree under education from Augustana College, Bachelor of Arts Education, and then you have your award and honors all the way at the bottom of the second page, they kind of, there's a disconnect. So really have it up, up to date. Uh, so education first, teaching experience second. They wanna know what you've done, so clinical out, clinicals, um, student teaching, uh, you can put those right right there. If you have done many, many different clinicals at different schools, um, again, tailored to the job. So if you have it here, if you did 
you're going for elementary ed and you did um, something that's not elementary ed, but that's where you do your clinicals, kind of put that aside or maybe, maybe make it a side note. But you really want to make it for what you're applying for. Um, so tutoring, private lessons if you're a music, uh, going into music, clinical student teaching, huge. Leadership opportunities. Um, Augie's huge about um, being involved on campus. Kaylin also said, you know, we're super busy being president of this, captain of this, being on two sports teams and five professional affiliated groups. Um, that's your time to shine. So one or two, you know, one or two sentences of things that really made, you know, I was um, captain of the water polo team. Great, put it there. If you are a, an admissions ambassador, this is how you, you know, I got to do this, this, and this that would help me qualify for this job that I'm applying for. So again, organization is key. Up until last, the end of last year, I wasn't that organized, and now I am the most organized. <laughs> so um, professional affiliations. So for me, it was um, National Band Association, the Illinois Music Educators Association. Let them know that you are searching to get better. So if they think that you're just going to go in and do your own thing, they, then the next person that says, hey, I'm part of these three groups. This is how I'm involved. This is what I'm doing. Um, they really like that. Last but not least is references. Um, a lot of people think that references should be on the first page so they can see it. References should be the last thing that you do because um, when it comes down to administrators, looking at this, of course, and this isn't my opinion, this is just things that people have told me that are administrators. Um, references at the bottom of the last page because if they are looking for the prime candidate, they're not gonna look at your references to see who you put down. They wanna see what you've done and then your references. Question on the order, yes. So does it, the resumes have to fit in that two page limit too? Yeah, two, uh, one to two pages. If you can get it one page, great, uh, two page, but no more than two pages. Um, references, is it okay if they're on the third page? Because I've been told before that it should be separate. It's sh no. two pages. Okay. Two pages. Gotcha. Mine, mine was literally this, this big at the bottom of the page. Okay. Yeah. Second page. Any other questions? Again, at the end, um, you guys can write down your email address. You can have this whole presentation. Okay. okay. Question. So where would you put like study abroad with education? So with mine, what this isn't all of mine. Mine was education, teaching experience, and mine was um, worldwide performances. You know, if I played in Italy my sophomore year. Um, so study abroad could go under, um, you know, bio, uh, not viable, but like opportunities around the world or something and then you can say this is what I've done from this date to this date just they it needs to be clean so they shouldn't have to if you have a title of um, uh, uh, international experiences and then you say boom that's what I've done just as long as they don't have to say oh international teaching experiences in professional organizations I don't have boom 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 um, would you recommend having like a skills section if you didn't cover those in like, like teaching experience? Give an example. Um, like able to coach. Um, if those you things? that that can be um, cover letter. Cover okay. letter's huge. Um, you could say things that they don't. So a lot of administrators that I've talked to said that you're, they look at your cover letter. If whatever they don't find in your cover letter, they look go to your application form. Okay. And so if you say I can do this, this is what I've been doing, and I probably should put a cover letter on here. I totally forgot. Uh, but this is again, it's your time to shine. So this is what I'm able to do. This is how I've done it. These are the experiences that led me there. And then you can save the rest for your application. Questions, comments, concerns. Wonderful. My resume is done. Now what? Time to get uh, time to get the word out. So these. Okay, so online applications, Apple Track, job fairs, and LinkedIn. Okay, online applications and Apple Track. Uh, Apple Track is kind of like the common app, but for um, jobs. So Apple Track, each district has their own online thing, and so you go to the, the district websites, and you it says you know to for employment, go for Apple Track, usually under Human Resources if you can't find the employment. Um, and then you fill out all the typical things, your name, um, where you went to school, references, um, teaching experiences, <laughs> and then you get to, it gives you all the list of available job openings. And so you're able to say, oh look, uh, elementary education, or music education, or ELL, EL, or it tells you what they have available. Um, I, as a music teacher, and just in general, there weren't a lot of jobs open, so I, I went to just, I was rattling my brain of all these districts that I knew 
from high school, all of these different districts that my friends went to, and I just went to their websites, and whether they had a job open or not, I filled out the Apple Track. Because the let because the next thing that the next step is once a job is posted, all you have to do is click, you know, you check every so often, click the button, it transfers over into the pool of where you are that you're eligible for the job. So if I applied to um, Davenport and there was not a music job open, and then I filled out the Apple Track, and then I checked back two weeks later, and then there was a job, click one button, good to go. Hold on. Um, other online applications, um, Car uh, Carrie was here and she said that um, Schaumburg School District, I also applied there, that they have, um, they don't post any jobs anywhere, and so it's, it's really, uh, you have to go to their district website, you have to go through a different uh, pooling, but there's, just check a bunch of different websites. K-12 Job Spot, like Caitlin said, um, is great. There's uh, the ISBE, the Illinois State Board of Education site, has a lot of different job openings. But just I, I just kind of strictly went to the districts because they are more up to date. Say, can you see? Oh no, fine. Um, job fairs, job fairs. There are plenty. Uh, NIU job fair is a huge one that's relatively close. Uh, Lake County job fair at Stevenson High School in the Burbs. That's where I went to. Um, there is a bunch of different job fairs. So who doesn't know what a job fair is? Wonderful. Uh, that was where how I got my job. I wasn't expecting to get anything from it. It was just kind of get my work, uh, name out. Pros and cons. Um, the pros is that you usually, if you wait in line, you get a fi at least a five minute interview with someone there, guaranteed. So that is your time to ready go. This is this is why I'm applying. They have some questions for you, and it just worked out where um, I met the principal of one of the schools. It's a five, six, and seven, eight schools. It's connected, it's weird. Um, but the five, six principal is also the director of fine arts. I met him. Uh, our five minute interview went 20 minutes and he um, loved everything that I had to say, he asked me back, we'll talk about it later. But job fairs are huge for getting that initial guaranteed five minute, 10 minute, yeah, it takes time. Um, but you know, get, there, get to job fairs early. Um, make sure that when you go to job fairs, you have plenty of uh, resumes, plenty, you know, kind of get a portfolio together, get your resumes, get some copies of letter, letters of recommendation. So if they ask you, hey, do you have anything to show us? Here, absolutely, here's a copy of this, here's a copy of this. I made the mistake of going to that job fair and I had only five copies of my resume and I had a virtual copy on my iPad and I ran out in five minutes because there are some at some tables for one job, there are three administrators that would love to talk to you. And so you're not gonna say, hey, can you share? <laughs> no, um, it's, they, they don't like that. But um, I told them that I would send them elect electronically, that was fine, but always be prepared. Job fairs are huge, I am a huge advocate. Uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is the new up and coming thing um, with education as well. Many people think LinkedIn is just for business. Um, I disagree. Uh, so LinkedIn is a professional network that is Facebook for, for the professional world. It is also basically an online resume. So anybody can see it. Uh, you get to put your experiences, you get to put your skill set. There's a special thing that says what skills you're good at, um, what you're certified in, um, and then you get to follow different groups that might help you find a job. And so other people can endorse you on LinkedIn, endorse you in the things that you, your skill set that you're listed. So on mine, I have music, music, ed music education, communication, um, music technology, and other people that I'm connected with, friends with, can say, yes, I totally say that he's good at this, or yes, I say he's good at that, or yes, I can vouch for this. Um, other people can do um, write letters of recommendation or write on your page. Um, I am a huge advocate of LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of people think it's worthless, but I, you know, as it's just another thing. You know, it's if you if it's a way to get your name out there. Great. So, questions about these three? Yes, Caitlin. Can I add on something? Do to it. The job fairs? Yeah. Okay, this might seem obvious, but make sure when you go to the job fairs that you present yourself as if you are going to an interview, oh, including sure. the way you dress because the way it usually works is they have a table and then there's like rows of chairs or a line where you have to stand and wait. And so they can see you walking around, they can see you waiting in line. And I've been to job fairs where people show up like in jeans or like guys don't wear black socks. And it, I mean, they pick up on those things, even though it's not a formal interview, you need to dress like you're Usually going Usually guys are in too. suits, girls are in yeah. either suits or dresses. Exactly. That's, it's you very, need, very professional. I mean, it sounds kind of shallow, but the physical <clears throat> appearance is huge. very important huge. because if you show up looking frumpy, they're automatically going to think they don't really care. <laughs> Great. 
Questions? Moving on. Okay, once I play, what do I do next? Okay, so the first thing, follow up your application with an email or phone call. Um, right away, you know, I, maybe not, maybe give it a day or two, um, but just to, like I said, hundreds and hundreds of people are applying for a job. So, or in Caitlin, the other Caitlin knows here said she only had three applicants that applied. Um, but uh, if you if you are at different areas, there are many, many, many applicants. So um, a phone call or an email saying, um, "Hey, I just want to introduce myself. I just filled out an application for this. I just want you know an area of interest. Um, thank you for your time." That's just another. That's one extra step that says, "Hey, he's really interested in this job, or she's really interested in this job." You know, maybe I can take a second look, and that is it's it's very important. Um, a couple family friends are, like I said, in administration, and they say that automatically kind of puts that name in, in their head that says, okay, I'm gonna go take a second look at this, or I'm really gonna kind of look to see um, if they have what it takes. Um, the second one uh, is kind of after you get an interview, so I forgot to take that off, um, and then go back to applying. That's once you apply for one, keep going. That's, it, it's never ending. I got an interview. How should I prepare? Okay, so this is a lot, I'm sorry, it's very wordy. But, and uh, like I said, you can have a copy of this, you don't need to write everything down. Interview tips is first, and then possible interview topics. Interview tips, always, always be professional. Start and end with a handshake, very professional. You wanna, like Caitlin said, be, be, present yourself like you are the bee's knees, but you have to be very professional. <laughs> Number two, talk clear and precise, try not to ramble. Um, they don't want to be confused of what you're trying to say. I've done this and this and this and I talk really fast, but I can't really do this, but it, no. Slow down, think about what you're talking about. Don't ramble. Number three, make sure your answers put the student first. Remember, every student can learn and you are responsible for that. A st if a student isn't learning properly, it's not the student's fault that they're not getting it. You have to figure out a way and differentiate and make it work. Um, I've already run into several, several, several students. I'm in charge of 195 kids. I'm lucky that I have a co-director. Um, but we have 195 students in band from fifth or eighth grade, and there are some students that it takes extra time, but it's your job to figure out, okay, what can I do to make this work? That's you, and making that known, and that's just say, yeah, this is what I would do for me, and then maybe help them. No, it's always them. For the student, this is what I would do if they had a blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, that's huge. I say huge a lot, I'm sorry. Four, uh, avoid answers that begin, I would do this and I would do that. You may get there and end the answer, but never lead with that. So if you haven't had an experience that they're asking you about so for a behavior issue, um, don't say, well, I would end up doing this. Just say, you know, I've actually run into a similar thing in student teaching or a similar thing in clinicals that would lead me to do this. Don't start with, yeah, I would do that, or maybe this, or maybe I could try that. Um, because they are looking for someone that is, one, confident in what they're gonna be doing, and two, is educated enough that even if they haven't gone through it, they know that it's a possible outcome. Does that make sense? Okay. Last, um, definitely not least, uh, always give answers that are proactive and not reactive. Um, the best thing that I can think of is um, phone calls home aren't always a bad thing. Um, starting at the beginning of the year, make positive phone calls home and make that relationship with your, um, your parents. Um, because the second, if you, uh, let's say Marcus is doing great, he's doing a great job, and he is, at the beginning of the year, he's um, a rock star, and then halfway through the year, he punches a kid in the middle of the band. That should not be the first time a parent is talking to you, because they're gonna be like, well, I didn't know anything that was leading up to this, you know, I thought he was doing fine, and blah, blah, blah. But if you communicate from day one, it's very, very important. Um, other things would be proactive would, um, this is my behavior management system, and this is the steps that I take that if this happens, this is the, this is what's consequences and how things work out, this is the room set up, not, hey, if this happens, that's when I go to, go to do this. They should be very informed. Okay, questions about the interview tips. All right, possible interview topics. Um, how to relate to students, parents, and coworkers. Coworkers are just as important as parents and students. Um, they want to make sure that you're not going to be a hermit and you're going to be in your own classroom, you're going to eat lunch in your room, you're never going to talk to anybody else. They want to make sure that you're a well-rounded um, candidate. 
Um, same with students, same with parents. That goes back to the proactive, not reactive. Um, number two, rapport with students. That is another topic. How are they going to, um, you know, caring about that some of them are in dance and field hockey is huge because if they don't want to, under, if they don't like band at all, but they just need that small motivation, they're like, oh, maybe if he showed up at my field hockey, I would do this. Incredible. It's a huge change of mentality. Um, number three, building positive relationships goes with rapport with students, but building positive relationships, how are you going to do it? How You have to have a plan, not just, oh, it's going to take time. Um, you have to take an interest in your students for them to take an interest in what you're teaching. Number four, um, how, are you, how would you facilitate learning in your classroom? Um, how are you going to help your students get there? Uh, goes back with, remember every student can learn and you are responsible for that. So how, how, what different ways for different student learning are you going to try and um, how are you going to make it work? Number five, what makes a good lesson? There's a acronym called G-A-N-A-G, -A -A I'm not pronouncing it, um, but it's, it's a well-known lesson planning um, acronym I didn't learn until after graduation. Uh, it's goals and objectives, access prior knowledge, new information, uh, apply thinking skills, and then goal review, um, and then the end, end is, and then it says assessment in, in between. So you do goals and objectives, assessment. Access prior knowledge, assessment. New info, assessment. So you want to make sure that you're not going to go, go, here's our goals and objectives, this is what we did the other day, this is the new info, now what do you remember? I didn't remember what we did yesterday, I, don't, I can't focus. Um, that's a good kind of tips and tricks, but um, assessments, I mean, they talk about assessment at Augie all the time. Um, until I was living it, you don't really know, and that I do that all the time. Uh, less yes, yes and no questions kind of go deeper. So what do you, um, so how did you think this piece sounded? Oh, it sounded pretty good. Okay, why did it sound good? Uh, it, our tone was wonderful and we were playing with good posture. Excellent. It took an extra five seconds. Um, number six, empathy questions. You don't have to understand why a student is feeling a way they're feeling, but they are feeling that way. You can't say you're being ridiculous, you know, you'll be fine. Validate how they feel. Uh, you know, if they're scared to come into class because um, the saxophone section is way too loud, well then you, see, you know I recognize how you feel. Just you know how are we gonna how are we gonna make it work? If they're um, for elementary education, if they don't want to sit next to three other people, and they it's because they you know make faces at me. Well, okay, that sounds ridiculous, but hey, you're feeling that way. I completely understand. What can I do? Last one, behavior management. Kind of, kind of already talked about that. What is your behavior management plan? Questions. You guys are easy. Yeah, I'm gonna go relatively quickly. Seven minutes. Good questions for them. Uh, so always ask questions for the people that are interviewing you. Um, one, is there a mentor program in place for new teachers? Are you gonna be left all by yourself with no help? Um, what is the extent of the mentor program? I, I'm in a mentor program, and I'm lucky that it's my the choir director, so we share five feet of space. Um, so anything that I, anytime I have a question, I, he's my go-to. Um, two, average class size. You don't want to go into a school and realize that your average class size is 47. That would be crazy. Um, see what you're going. See what you're walking into. Number three, professional development opportunities during the year for all teachers. Um, so is it just the beginning new hire program and then nothing else for the rest of the year? Or are there late start days that are, or early release days? What types of things um, can I, you know, all teachers are, all teachers are students, so we want to learn and learn and learn to get better. Um, number four, what is the timeline for the position to be filled? That is, in a, that is a completely appropriate question to ask. A lot of people don't ask. But if you are, I mean, you are going to be applying to many, many other places. And if you say, you know, when can I, you know, what is, what is our next steps? Where, what can I um, expect from this, this district? You know, I start March 1st. Do I know in July or do I know next month? Or in five days, in some cases. Uh, last one, what type of elementary, music, math, history, teacher are you looking for? They'll tell you. Right. Uh, I, during my interview, I said, what kind of music teacher are you looking for? And they say, we're looking for one that is confident, that is looking for, um, is good with behavior management, that wants to be around, and is going to be visible. Yeah. Great. I know exactly. And, it, and, it, and that's, since it's at the end, it kind of validates what you were talking about. So you know right away, 
you know right away, um, maybe I shouldn't have said that, or I'm not going to say that in my next round of interviews, or I, that, everything that I said, it was, it's right with what they want. With good questions come bad questions. Um, what is the pay for this position? Don't ask that, ever. Um, they, that makes it sound like that you are too interested in money and not their kids. Um, that you could say everything right in the interview and say, all right, so how much am I getting paid? Uh, two, what happens if students are incapable of learning? Um, obvious, My, the student is not understanding anything, what do I do? Don't do it. Um, what is the school district's policy of leaving school early? So if you have a huge commute and I want to be traffic, can I just like slip out five minutes before? These are questions that people ask. I'm not making these up. Like that's that's an actual thing. But you guys are smart enough not to do that. Okay, tips from administrators. Yesterday I went to both my five six side of school and seven eight side of the school. Uh, both have two principals. Both have two assistant principals. And I asked them. Give me, advice, give me advice for the next generation of students. And so these are all quotes, I didn't make these. Um, apply everywhere, don't limit yourself. Charter, private, public, rural, urban, in-state, out-of-state, don't, and then just go anywhere. Go where the job is. Okay, let's say the job market you know, isn't the greatest and you should all know that, but don't limit yourself and say, I'm only gonna apply here in this state, in this region, that's it. Sorry, if I don't get a job, I don't get a job. No, apply everywhere, be adventurous. Um, don't be afraid of urban schools. Um, urban schools sh uh, show resilience, and so a lot of um, seniors think that urban schools, they don't want to be there, it's going to be so hard, it's low income, it's low, it's high risk, um, but it shows resilience. So if you do that for a while and you develop a management program, and how are you going to get these students engaged? Communication, and you see the support of that administration, if and when you leave to go somewhere else, you can use that as, hey, I've done this, this, and this. Your district is a piece of cake, okay? Don't be afraid. Two, any experience is huge. Uh, teaching a teacher's assistant, teacher's aide, <coughs> part-time, tutoring, coaching, you just need to get your foot in the door any way you can. Um, that's, I mean, they can have a maternity leave. They can have, uh, you could be the, uh, the teacher's assistant for first through fourth grade and then um, all of a sudden a teacher just up and leaves or reti you know, retires mid-year or something and then you are right there because you know the system of the school, you know their kids, you know the school, everything. So get your foot in the door. Number three, the more certifications, the more doors open. Again, you need your foot in the door. Um, if, uh, Caitlin's middle school endorsement with her um, K-6 or whatever it was, more, more jobs are open for more elementary jobs. Our K-12 K music ed is huge. Um, it's very important. Uh, so more certifications, the better. It takes the Praxis test for Iowa. Gives you the option to apply in Iowa. Common sense. Um, four, have an open mind, be flexible. We've done that. Don't have the mindset that I'm only going here. Write down the names of the people who are interviewing you. This way you can reach out with an email or phone call later on. Um, that way if you have interviewed by the principal, you can email them later and say thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate your time. Seven, the, uh, the more people involved in your interview process, the better the job. Um, I didn't really understand that until this morning, but it makes a lot of sense. If you have a, just a one interview and a job offer, I don't know how involved that district and those teachers are going to be involved in your career at that school. Um, I'm, the, one of the next few slides is, um, I think the next one is my, um, what I had to do. That was crazy intensive. Yeah, my journey. Uh, Lake County Job Fair, that was our, my initial interview. Uh, online application. Second interview was a teacher panel of six teachers and two administrators. Um, it's kind of scary, but it's okay. Uh, you get through it. General education questions and content questions. I had the general music teacher, the, band, the other band director, the two orchestra teachers, um, the choir director, and they just rattle off a lot of general ed things that I talked to you about before. I know I'm almost done, I'm so sorry. Um, third interview, I had to teach for two and a half hours. Uh, three different classes, I had to teach three very different things, jazz band, clarinet lesson, A3 concert band. Um, they, they had four administrators in the room at all times, so it was very, very, very involved, and they knew exactly when I was done, exactly what they were doing. So people can talk the talk. Um, make sure you can walk the walk. All right, start applying now. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, if you want to come up here, I have a pen and write down your email address. You can have this app. Thank you for coming. And